Uh, it's such a blessing to be here um, at Ashka and be able to plant trees for the people here. Um, to be able to spend so much time in our ministry here working with uh, the members at Ashka and just really getting to know them. And then we get to plant trees and as these trees just grow and produce fruit for us that uh, we get to go and uh, see the, pr the fruit that will be produced in these young people here at Ashka. It's so great to be able to minister to them, to be able to just know them and uh, get to know them. And as the trees grow, we hope that our relationships with them will grow as well. And um, we can't wait to be back uh, and see the trees as they continue to grow and grow and grow. And then more importantly, see our friends and the relationships that we have with them as it continues to grow as well. Stories. People ask what impact did we have on Haiti and I cannot leave without saying what an impact they had on my life. Uh, every child we met was so excited to see us jumping in our arms, holding our hands, following us up the mountain, uh, eager to hear what we had to hear even though they didn't speak our language. Uh, everybody was just wonderful to us. Um, it just shows that our God is an awesome God. He is a big God. We all have the same God. Mm -hmm. And the songs that we sang, we're all worshiping the same God. So it's just been an awesome experience. Uh, I'll take home the smiles of all these children with me. Haiti, actually. And I can honestly say that um, although I think I've been able to bless um, some people that we've worked with, it's definitely blessed me um, exponentially more than I could have ever hoped for. Um, if you are thinking, well, it's too expensive, I'm scared, I don't know what's going to happen, if you step out in obedience, God is going to bless you beyond measure. Um, and if you love people, you will love Haiti because it's all about people here. People that love you, that have never met you before. Children want lovingly, like little hands braiding your hair, um, little hugs around your waist. Um, just making lifelong relationships with people you only spend a few days with. And if you love people, you will love Haiti. So I encourage you to step out in faith and come to Haiti because God will bless you so much more than you can ever imagine. My God moment would be the people here and how they treat other people. You don't have to be, you don't have to have the right car or the clothes. They're very loving. All you have to do is give them your time. And it's always enough. Um, this has been a challenging week for me. I got to do two days of ministry with a torn heart with the loss of my dad. But God was able to save me and use me anyway. And then I got sick a couple of days. But he was able to work through that by letting me rest and just be prayer support and just encouraging the other people to know that even though sometimes life is tough, that God's still in control and Amen. he has everything that we need. Amen. And I'm just so thankful for this opportunity. And even though I'm not feeling well, I'm still not ready to go because it's such a great place to be. Amen. And I can't wait to come back in July. Amen. Okay. Uh, what's been a memorable thing about Haiti? Well, from day one, uh, this is my second trip, and one of the things that's most amazing is how at home I feel. This is beginning to feel like family, uh, because I know a lot of people now. And what has been just revealed, God has revealed to me, is that these are my brothers and sisters in Christ, just like uh, Long Beach, Pastor Jan, uh, in our own church. Uh, I couldn't love them more, and I just feel such a bond with them. Uh, it's not, I need them every bit as much as uh, they might need anything I could do or be for them. Right. Uh, it has just been an uh, amazing experience of uh, seeing their faith so pure and undefiled. Uh, you know, we read the scriptures, uh, they live it every day. Right. And it's been a, a real blessing to me and to speak with them and know that I'm God willing we'll see them in July again is just a thrill. I'm already missing them and ready to come back. One of my favorite stories is when we were walking the streets in the, the little town that we're in and being able to meet with the people and talk with them and to share Jesus with them and then when it was my turn to share my story with a family um, and I asked a young girl, did she have Jesus in her heart? And she told me no. And I asked her, would you like to have Jesus come and live in your heart? She said yes. And then all of the rest of the family started coming around. And when we prayed, there were eight people that prayed. 
and they asked Jesus to come and live in our, their heart, and that was my favorite story. God's timing is always perfect, and we don't always understand that and get that, but it was, it was perfect the whole week. We did not come down here to bathe children and to give haircuts. In fact, um, on the haircut day, I mean, we just did not think it was going to be possible because we did not have the, the tools to do it. And it was amazing how um, God brought it all together. And we were able to get into town, get the tools we needed, and give those kids haircuts and the, the men haircuts. And, and it was real neat to see the PPM ministry uh, interpreters get into the ministry part. And though we were shaving heads, they were detailing the heads. And, and, and it was, that was a refreshing thing to see them minister alongside of us. But when the next day came and the medical team was here, uh, they were overjoyed that we had given the kids haircuts because only if the kids' hair, uh, their heads have been shaved, are they able to tell if they have a certain disease and they can treat them. And several of the kids had that this disease and they were then able to treat. And, and that was just God's timing because we had no idea the medical team was coming into town. Yeah. Hey, uh Yesterday, we had the opportunity to uh, go to Ashka and feed pumpkin soup, which is what, what Haitians eat on Independence Day, to uh, the handicapped orphanage. Uh, and it was probably my most uh, favorite experience of the week. Uh, just when we walked in with that food, their faces lit up, and it was, it was just awesome. Uh, there are several there that can't feed themselves. And so uh, Kevin really stepped up when he fed a man who uh, his hands were kind of like bound, they wouldn't open. And he would sit there, he sat there for a while and would dip his bread and feed him, which was really awesome to see. Um, I actually had the opportunity to feed a young child who, who couldn't feed himself. And um, just the, the smile on his face and he just wanted more and more and more like he couldn't get enough. And I, I loved every minute of it. Um, our team, I think, loved Loved it. We were all busy everywhere, moving around, um, but and the kids were getting thirds and fourths. But it was just a, an amazing experience to, to be a part of, and um, I just I I feel blessed to have had the opportunity to be able to go and do that for those children. Is that good? Okay. Uh, through Tree Ministry, I saw that God had already went before us. He had heard our prayers and he had answered them by going and preparing their hearts and making them tender to hear his word, his message. And really, John 3.16 is his message and that's the story we told. We told his story, not our story of salvation, but his story of salvation. And when we told that, it was an amazing to see the softness that came over people and the transformations that took place and um, six people I shared with accepted Jesus Christ and when you are willing as part of being part of the lower story of God but being obedient to his call willing to sacrifice, willing to just say, yes, God. He prepares the way before us. And we um, just have to be willing, go with a loving spirit and heart, be flexible. And when you tell his story and you see people's lives change, there is nothing in this world that compares to that. When you see the joy that God fills their heart with, and when you see them running to you to accept Jesus, that is the greatest gift. And as we give them the gift, they give us the gift back. And it's just seeing God providing all the way. All we have to do is trust Him. He will bring us the people. He'll take us to where we need to go. And at first, I wanted to go up the mountain. I wanted to take a hike <laughs> up a mountain and to go to a familiar place that had already been gone to. 
and there was a need for another person to go to another team. Well, I volunteered to go to that team. Had I not volunteered, I would not have had been a part of six salvation experiences. And the volunteering was just that I felt God calling me to go to unfamiliar, to go to a new territory, a new ground. And I'm so thankful that he gave me that opportunity and I wouldn't trade it for anything. The biggest blessing in my heart seeing children praying and accepting Christ, seeing teenagers accepting Christ, um, five girls and a young man, and that that is what life is about. That's what we are called to do, and I thank God for the opportunity, and I will be back. So I guess my story and what I've learned throughout the week is that, first of all, prayer works. We prayed many times that asked God to go before us and prepare the way and prepare the hearts of the people that we would come in contact with. And I truly believe that God has answered those prayers. Uh, I don't believe in chance encounters or coincidences. So when we were able to um, meet uh, an older gentleman in the grocery store and he spoke English, uh, we were able to talk about why we were here and what we were doing. But we also, Kay and, and Angela and I, had our salvation bracelets on. And so we were able to share with the man, his name was Charles, the plan of salvation through the bracelet. But also planting that seed, there was another young man that was right behind and he spoke English, his name was Alex, and he wanted to, he said, can you explain that to me? So I gave him my bracelet. Uh, we all gave our bracelets away. And I was able to go through the plan of salvation standing in a grocery line in Haiti. I'm just sorry that it took me having to go to Haiti to share the gospel with somebody. And it just, um, this trip has shown us that we are all God's people. But more importantly, before we tell them that God loves them, we have to be able to tell them, I love you. And the Haitian people have been so kind and so helpful and so receptive to God's word. Um, but it was all God. We just stepped out of the way.
can't contain, pain I can't control. And I want, I want, I want more of you, God. And I want more of you, God. Yeah.